Hallelujah, Lord. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. Amen. The ones who are watching us online, we would like to invite the church as present to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Word of God that we are going to read in the book of Psalms. Psalms. Psalms 100, 116. We're going to read verses 12 and 13. Psalms 116, verses 12 and 13. Amen. Psalms 116, verse 12 says the following. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me. I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. The church may be seated. May the Lord bless us through his word. My brethren, this word is a biblical passage and the psalmist he makes an invitation to man to take up the cup of salvation. This is the topic that he approaches in this verse that we just read. He describes many things. He describes his condition before God, the condition by which he presents himself towards God. He was Jewish was a, an Israelite, so in other words, it was the church of God, we can say that it was Israel, and he describes the condition he had before the Lord. He speaks about his anguish, about his suffering, of his sadness, because at that moment he speaks in the moment in which his soul was anguished before the Lord. The servant at this moment, uh, this, this work of the Lord, there are moments in which he presents himself before the Lord in this condition. The world it squeezes us, it oppresses us, and at that moment, he goes before Lord, the Lord to present the, the cry of his soul, the cry of a soul that was afflicted, that was anguished, in the moment in which we read this this ver those verses, it says on verse 12, he had already been able to achieve a blessing, but before that, that was his condition. It was a plea of a soul that was afflicted, because the soul of man who serve God in their mo moments in which we see ourselves like this. And Israel also, the nation of Israel, they presented themselves to God when they are delivered from Egypt that we can see what the greatest affliction that Israel had experienced when they leave Egypt their expression was this we are like those who dream because great things had the Lord done for us great things and the question that we ask to, to the Lord and to ourselves we ask him the greatest things that the Lord has done to Israel. What was that? Was it possible because they had cars in Egypt, or because they had land in Egypt, or because, or because there were a few that prospered there? Joseph prospered. He even became governor to Egypt. And the Lord blesses men. He visits men in the material field as well. But we want to say that the one that Israel glorified. What is the expression of the psalmist here saying, Lord, what am I going to offer to you for all the benefits? And what are those benefits? My brethren, we are here. And our expression of praise to the Lord, our expression of love to the Lord is because of what He has done for our soul. We have uh, spiritual gifts. We have uh, the revealed word. You have uh, a 
comfort to our souls every day in the presence of God. We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God. Our soul praises the Lord because the Lord has done many benefits to our souls. He has brought to them, to our soul. If we stop and think about what we were and what we are today, we will glorify because many benefit the Lord has brought to our souls. Isn't it true? There are moments in which we present ourselves to God in the condition that He was before the Lord. The anguish of hell took hold of Him. I found great sadness, but my brother, when we go toward God, we went, go on anguish and we live delivered because He delivers our soul. We go to Him sad, but we live happy because He transforms our souls. He transforms our lives. The benefits that He has given us are many, even the material benefits. But what He wants to do in your soul tonight, what He wants to do for us, is to give us benefits that will lead to eternity. And when the psalmist he says, what am I going to give to the Lord for all the benefits that He has given me, has done for me? So then He makes an invitation to men, which was to take the cup of salvation. It is interesting that the cup was mentioned many times in the Bible like a mystery, like something that was hidden, but that God wants to reveal to men. When Jesus goes to the cross of Calvary, He was already on the cross. He was sick. He knew that He was going to die. He knew that in a few hours, maybe minutes, He was going to lose His life. And He knew that. But he, His plea to the Father was this, Lord, if possible, take the cum, cup from Me. I don't want to go through this moment. I don't want to go through this time. But he completes saying, Lord, but in everything may your will be done and not mine. My brethren, this cup for the faithful church is this. There are moments in which we are not, we don't want to go through a trial that we don't want to, to experience. But the church does not live off of what they want, but of what God has for the church. And the servants that has understood this gospel knows one thing that he's going to go to the trial glorifying the Lord praising the Lord because he knows one thing in his trial there is victory in the presence of God he, Jesus didn't want to go through the moment he, where he was Father I don't want to take this cup I don't want to witness, experience this pain but I don't want to do according to uh, uh, what my heart wants as a man but I want to do your will to get deliver my life to rescue man who is in the world. So when there was a question was made in eternity, who is going to go? Who am I going to send? Jesus answered, here I am, send me. I'm going to deliver, if, deliver myself. Even if pain comes, Jesus knew of one thing. In that situation, in suffering, there was also his victory. In order for us to understand this, and I also read, something that I found to be interesting. When Isaac goes to be sacrificed, when Abraham takes his son to the mount to sacrifice his son, Isaac, there was also a cup that was going to be drank. Abraham, he didn't want it. It was the son that God had given him, the son of the promise, but he fulfilled everything that the Lord had shown to him. Even though as a man he would not want that moment, even though as a father he would not want to go through this moment, he brings his son, his son there, prepare the, the altar, prepares the, the candle, he prepares the object of the sacrifice, which was his son Isaac. And at that moment, at the very last moment, Isaac turns to the father and says, Father, everything is prepared. The wood is here. The altar is prepared. Isaac knew that scenario. He knew that the scenario there was a scenario that would lead to death, to a sacrifice. Then he turns to the father and he asks, Father, 
Everything's prepared, but where is the lamb? Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And my brother, that's the question that echoes in the world. The man who's away from the presence of God does not know Jesus because man asks himself, where is the lamb? Where is the joy? Where is salvation? Where is the deliverance of my soul that is imprisoned to, to sin? And Isaac asked the father, where is the lamb? And the answer of Abram was this, God will provide. Hallelujah. And my brother and sister, God, you leave this place with a word. God will provide to you your victory. God will provide. doesn't matter where it will come from. doesn't matter where your victory will come from. Be sure of one thing. God will provide. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Abram, he not, did not know what was God, God was going to do. But he knew of one thing. God was going to provide. God was going to act. And God acted. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At that moment, he raises his hand to harm his son. There was a cry from God saying, Abraham, don't do that. And Abraham turns to the side and he sees there the lamb that the Lord had prepared for him. My brethren, blessed be the name of the Lord because we were condemned to death. Man was condemned to death, eternal death of his soul. But Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. He gave himself as a lamb of God to bring deliverance to the soul of man from spiritual death. So Jesus went to the cross and took up this cup, the cup of death. That's why he said, God, take away this cup from me. Yeah, it is interesting that God, he spared Isaac. God spared man. God spared our lives from eternal death of the soul, but he did not spare his own only begotten son. He sent Jesus to this world. He came to this world. He came with a word, like the, the word that came, became flesh and inhabited amongst us. And he gave himself on the cross for me, for you on the cross. Blessed be the Lord. And when Jesus was uh, was at the last moment with his, with his disciples, in the supper, uh, that was also the, the presence of the cup. So he, he break the bread, which represented his body that was going to be hurt on the cross of Calvary. So then he takes up the cup. When he takes up the cup, he says, this cup represents a new testament of my blood. So that also pointed out to his blood that was going to be shed. So when Jesus goes to the cross, my brethren, that's what happened. There was no testament. There was a new alliance between man and God. And we're here tonight. And the invitation of the Holy Spirit tonight is this. What are you going to offer to God for everything that He has done for your soul? What are you going to offer to God for the salvation of your family, for the salvation of your life, for what God has done in your life? You're going to take, a, take up the cup. You're going to receive the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. Because when he gives the cry on the cross of, of Calvary, the Bible says that the veil of the temple, the temple was the place of sacrifice. The veil was ripped from top to bottom. So in other words, what comes from the top comes to rip the veil. A man from this moment forward has the right and access to the direct presence, to the presence of God. Direct access to the presence of God through the blood of Jesus. And today the church can, through the new covenant of the blood of Jesus, plead for this blood and have access to full fellowship with the Lord. And tonight, tonight you can say to the Lord, Lord, this is my trial, this is my cup, this is my pain operate on my behalf and he will operate because Isaiah prophesied that he took upon himself our pains because and when John speaks about the church the raptured church he looks to the church he looks to the church already with transformed bodies and God tells John John they are here because they they 
overcame through the blood of the Lamb. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And my brethren, this church will be victorious. The trial will continue to come. The, the tribulation will continue to come. But there is a people that is looking up. There is a people that is trusting the Lord. There are people that know that affliction come, the trials may come. But it is a people that has hope in God. God will act. God will operate. God will bring comfort. And He has brought comfort. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation. That's the salvation that God has given to us. It's a salvation that is not through the effort of man, but through the action and the strength of the Holy Spirit of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to sing a song of praise. Speak to the Lord at this moment. Give us your life to Him. Confess your life because He wants to pray on your behalf tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
A igreja vai estar de pé. The church is stand up at this moment. Still, a, a sister is going to praise to the Lord. Lord, we praise you because you are holy, holy, holy. Because great things you have done for us, Lord. We praise the Lord because our words are not able to understand the greatness that you have done for your church. Our gratitude, our praise to the Lord of Lords, the Lord of Lords. We praise your name, praise you in the name of Jesus. Lord, at this moment, we want to glorify your name because you have done great things to our souls. Glorify the fellowship, for the fellowship with our spirit. Glorify for the pre your presence in this place. To you be all our praise and adoration because this is a church that has been tried, but our victory is in your presence. Yes, we will praise you, Lord, and offer you our praise, our adoration, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. If one of the brethren desire to receive a prayer, you're here at the disposal of everyone. Just raise your hand. We're going to go toward you and pray for your life. <laughs> 